Ladies and gentlemen, we've all been there. We all wanted to create a procedural generated dungeon crawler, but we don't want to write our own logic for it. We all want to focus on the main and important parts about our character controller and the enemies. So what can we do to avoid this problem of writing code for the procedural generation? First of all, we're gonna open the Unity Asset Store and we search for Fimble Creations procedural generated crit beta. As the name of the asset already says, this is currently in beta and it's 50% less than when the pack fully releases. But what actually is procedural generated crit from Fimble Creations? Let's have a small little look. With Fimble Creations you can easily create a procedural generated crit system. So you can build your own little rooms or even houses or hotels, more story buildings, whatever you want. And you're not only limited to buildings and stuff, you can also create complete cities with it. Which is pretty amazing to be honest. Also, every component is accessible through scripting, so you can adjust things on the fly or generate complete new layouts while your user is playing the game. But with this accessibility, is there some downsides? Yes, of course, there are downsides at the moment because it's only a beta. You don't have a good reference point, so there's no documentation or not a good documentation. He provides some cool little tutorials on his YouTube channel, but that's basically it. With all the rules you can adjust on the modification thingy, it's getting really overwhelming after some time if you don't know what they do. It's a lot of trial and error to be honest. But most things should be easy to understand if you know some basic coding. So it's more like a visual coding stuff inside of the Fimble Creations procedural generated grid. So something like scale should be easy to understand if you know how to adjust scale in the X, Y and Z position or space. Things like a tag system is also provided, which also reminds you of like the normal coding stuff. So this should be easy as well. But there are some rules that are more specific. And with those I mean his quick solutions. Most of the quick solutions make sense according to the name, but some of them are kinda strange and I don't know how to use them properly. So I just use them when I think they make sense or anything. But how do you use the Fimble creation on your own? So let's take a little swap, let's go to Unity and check this out. Here we are now in Unity, so let's actually check out the Fimble creations. So we go to Window, Fimble Creations, Level Design and Crit Field Designer. We can actually just pin this up there, because we need this more often. So we want to create a new Field Designer. Let's go to Create New and let's say this is our Office Field, because I'm using the Syntax Polygon office pack whatever it's called name on display oh, with the field designer created we have some new parameters to play with so we can also go to the cell instruction comments this is more handy later on if we want to build like a complete layout but so so we don't need this at the moment field variables is something with spawning probabilities and stuff we can also use them later if you want just check them out on your own if you buy this asset for us the most important part is the field setup modification packs we have the root modification packs or the root modification pack. We don't use that. We create a new one, so just hit the plus sign. There is none in it. Create a new one. Let's call this one walls and floors. Maybe walls and windows would be more pro uh, would be better, but let's put everything in there. First of all, we're gonna create our first pack. So we have now a new modification pack. Let's rename this to. Let's call this just walls and open it. We can open it with, uh, if we just double click on the modification field here or if we double click down here. We can also pin this so it's easy for us to play around with it later on. Let's change to the game, uh, to the scene view. And as you can see, we are, uh, our crit is created uh, with the forward, so the uh, set axis and the X axis. If we press create, nothing happens because we have no prefabs in. So let's actually open some prefabs. I'm gonna go with the polygon of a set and I'm gonna choose the this wall and this window. So with everything or with our two presets in, let's add a spawner for our base wall. We add a rule, quick solutions, and we have the wall placer. As you can see, the polygon has no backface culling, but also everything is just spawned somewhere place on each side. So now the middle part is free and everything is set, but everything is overlapping as well. So let's adjust the direct arcs offset. So minus one on the set axis and one on the X and it's still overlapping a little bit. So add another rule. We go with the search one. 
search for the scale option. And I think it's 0.8 the last time I checked it. Yep, it's 0.8 on the X axis and everything is set. Everything looks nice. Everything fits inside of the little squares for our grid system. To actually get now the windows in as well, we add another spawner, let's say for the windows and we give our walls a tag called wall. Now go to the windows, give this one a tag window. And as you can see, everything is placed somewhere random. So add another rule. Oh wait, add rule, quick solutions, get coordinates, and we want to get the co co coordinates from the walls. Now all the windows are inside of the walls as well. To get rid of this problem, we simply gonna go under the advanced tab, set don't spawn if they're not tagged, so the middle one, the middle, uh, the windows, windows in the middle disappear and removed if tagged. So, so now if the windows and the walls place on the same coordinate, the walls just get deleted, so there is no wall that spawns on the same on the same place. But as you can see, the windows are may, uh, way bigger than the actually uh, than the walls. So add another rule: scale or get position, get scale. We could. Wait, we can also just say get scale from the walls. That's way easier. That's so, that's a new option he added. That's not a new option he added. This is just my stupid ass who doesn't remember that this exists. Now we also want that no window is next to each other. So not everywhere is a window. Let's get another rule. We have the spawning probability. We can adjust it. Let's say 0.25. And we want that windows don't spawn near each other or next to each other. So let's go to quick solutions. Was it quick solutions? I don't think it was quick solutions. Placement. Distance to other cells. Yeah, placement and distance to other cells from window. So now each window has at least a three cell distance to the next window. Now that our room has walls and windows, let's actually get some floor in as well. Let's add another modification field. Rename this one to floor. Open it and drag in your floors. So I'm gonna go back again to the building prefabs and I'm gonna take the wooden floor. I'm at a spawner, wooden floor, and now at the rule, quick solutions, and there's the floor placer. Now we can also adjust the offset. So let's actually look that everything is reset. I think it's one and minus one again. And the, uh, the floor is set. But as you can see, it's chittering all over the place. So add another rule. We go again for the scale one. And adjust the scale again. So even here it's 0.8. And now everything is set and everything is working and looking hella fine. As you can see, now we have our floor set. And we could also do the same with the ceiling. So I'm gonna just grab the ceiling in here. And instead of going to do everything again, I'm gonna duplicate the spawner, click on the spawner, and just change this to ceiling. Now the only thing I have to offset is the y-axis. Let's put this to 3 because this is apparently the height of the ceilings or of the walls and we have our roof in as well. We can do the same things with like interior designs and stuff but that's something I like. I would like that you check out. So if you want to check out this asset, link is in the description. And now back to my past, future, voiceover, whatever self. But in general I really like this idea of a procedural generated grid system. Building my own rooms has never been that easy. As someone who don't like to do level design but can do it, this is my go-to place for new level designs or new ideas and rapid prototyping and stuff. So I really like this idea. Also everything is compatible with a NavMesh agent, so you can also use a NavMesh agent to let, let's say, capsule one around your new build level. As you can see, creating rooms and everything is not that hard. Also, inserting interior designs and things on the wall is actually pretty easy. You just have to know a bit of visual coding. But how would I rate this asset? So I made four points. Each point is valued 10 nuts. So let's start with the first one. Complexity and easy to use. I would give this one 7 out of 10 nuts just because 
It's easy to use if you know visual coding, but without the good documentation that's actually eh, pretty hard. Then with the next point, time saver. 9 out of 10 nuts for me, definitely. This is one of my biggest time savers I have. I'm so impatient of doing level design even though I know how to do it, but I'm just impatient fuck. So that's actually so good to have this tool. Now the next point is value for money or how much bang do you get for your buck. I would give this 7 out of 10 nuts, it's 30 euros or 30 quid at the moment. That's actually a pretty good price for the stuff you get right now. If it's fully released it will most probably cost like 60 dollars or even more. So get it now while it's still in beta and you get some pretty good value out of it. Documentation and support. I don't know about the support but documentation is kinda meh to be honest. Um, I would give this 4 out of 10 nuts just because of the missing of every documentation. Well, he does some YouTube videos, but they're very basic and simple, so there's a lot of stuff missing. Also, you don't know all the rules, you have to figure them out. That's kind of... Uh, it's gonna track you down to a trial and error run. So in total, from possible creations procedural generated crit gets 27 out of 14 nuts. That's actually pretty good. It's a decent asset. Would I recommend it? Definitely. If you're like me impatient with level design or just don't want to handle like writing the logic for procedural generated dungeon stuff, easily go for it. It's definitely your type of asset you need. But for every other purpose, maybe think about it, maybe look into it, but you probably don't need it. So that's everything for me today. I hope you like this asset review. This is something new I did, but I hope you like it. If you did, give this video a thumbs up, maybe subscribe soon, uh, don't miss the next asset review and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.